Welcome to the Detroit Currents Podcast. We talk all things real estate, business, entrepreneurship. And today we're with one of our guest speakers at the Millionaire Mentorship Mastermind at the Orleans Hotel and Casino, Christian Osgood out of... Seattle, Washington. My hometown. Yep. Born and raised Issaquah, Issaquah High, just like you, I believe. Oh my God. How much similarities do we have? Did you grow up on Squawk Mountain too? No, I was closer to Lake Sammamish, so... Okay. Right down there, though. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, pretty much your backstory. Born and raised Disqua and Disqua High. Uh, unlike my business partner, Cody, who just started real estate at 19, uh, dropped out of college and just started buying, I took the traditional route. So I went to college four years. I went to WSU, got my degree in business management and operations, which, funny enough, is exactly what I do. And I can say as a fact, I've never used a single thing that I learned there in wow. business management and operations. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but then did a seven-year sales career, uh, trying to get into real estate. I was under the impression that you're supposed to have money to play the game. So I was like, well, how do you learn real estate? Worked for the CoStar Group, LoopNet, Apartments.com. Right. That whole syndicate of basically all the internet for real estate. Right. And it took me about five years into that to realize, okay, being in real estate is not even remotely the same thing as investing in real estate. Right. If you want to be a real estate investor, the only way to do it is to, in fact, invest in real estate. Right. Yeah, that's that's funny because CoStars and Apartments.com, they pretty much own those spaces. Mm-hmm. They, they're big data aggregators. Is CoStar based out of uh, Denver? Uh, CoStar is out of D.C. D.C. Okay, makes sense. They own all the data. Yep. Probably politically aligned. Um, yes. So you grew up in Issaquah, which is the same place I grew in. Issaquah, just so you know, how old are you? I'm 31. 31. Okay, okay so I'm 45. So when I... W- Grew up in Issaquah, they had one stoplight. How much has Issaquah changed? Oh my goodness. Uh, even when I grew up there, there was still some farmland here and there. Yeah. Now it's uh, so Costco now has a 12 story tower in downtown Issaquah, and traffic to get from one side of Main Street to the other is probably about 15 minutes. So I waited tables at the Red Robin downtown, if you know where that is, right yes, by, I do. Right by where, when Costco moved from San Diego to make Issaquah their headquarters. And I, I worked at that restaurant when they opened, and I was a, a dish machine operator and worked my way up to uh, mid-manager over there. So that's that's crazy. And you also went to Central. Uh, my wife went to Central, yeah. I went to WSU, but oh, my, okay, my wife yeah. did Central. Okay, that's right. where you went. Yeah, so WSU, that's right. You just said that. So uh, how'd you like that? I loved it. I didn't do the whole party thing. I just I, I went in, played a lot of music, made friends. I started out as an entrepreneur major, and uh, I keep realizing everything after it's too late. I, like, I, I went in without a game plan, so I was like, entrepreneur, I want to be an entrepreneur. And then I realized, wait, if I'm starting a company, am I not going to hire myself based on my degree? Like, what does this get me? Right. So I was like, you know what? Everyone needs accounting. And so I started doing accounting, except that I hate accounting. Yeah. Which is another dumb idea. So by the end of it, I've, I've blown three years. I'm like, okay, well, what can I graduate with where I have the credits? And that yeah. Was, Management and ops. I was like, cool, we'll check the boxes and we'll get out of here. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, something about college. Same way, I kind of got a wasted degree. I got a comm studies degree. Oh, there you which, go. Which is, I think, worth less than... And I, Has anybody ever asked you for your degree? Uh, You know what? CoStar, I think, asked, but they didn't care. Right, yeah. So so tell me what you're up to now. So now I'm partnered with Cody Davis. Uh, the two of us have a few companies, but uh, 100 and... I have 110 multifamily units, and we own a historic resort in Union, Washington, property management company, and then our little education group. Where's Union, Washington? Union, Washington. So if you go Seattle, straight down to the Hood Canal. Right. Uh, so like the little city of Belfair, Shelton, it's right there on the canal. A lot Population of motor- like 600. Like a lot of people motorcycle in there, right? People motorcycle, boats. It has fantastic fishing and hiking. So if you're looking like PNW, it's right at the base of the Olympic Mountains on the water gorgeous location really yeah it's super cool and the funny thing is so i left seattle in 2005 so now almost 18 years and i went you know my sisters live there all my family still lives there Uh, i'm the only one that doesn't live there and i just went back there the other day and i'm like dude because i work downtown at 1100 uh olive way yeah which is uh they used to call them the twin toaster towers and then i moved Back there in 2008 to work at Fisher Plaza, which was in, is downtown by the Space Needle. But Seattle has grown so much, like to the degree where it's not even the same city anymore. No, and Seattle's gross. 
I hate Seattle. I, I, okay, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I'm, I, I'm looking at moving to Texas. Are you really? Yeah, that's going to be one of my next moves. I think that's the best thing you could ever say. Where are you, where in Texas? A uh, little north of Fort Worth, so DFW market. Okay, I know that area very well. Oh, really? Yeah, I actually had a prior to dating my wife, I had a long distance relationship in Dallas Fort Worth area, and also I had all of my accounts back in the REO days, which was from 2008 till 2011. Most of the major banks are based out of the Dallas Fort Worth area. Mm-hmm. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, um, GMAC at that point in time, uh, City. All of the banks were based out of there. So I know it pretty well. Are you like thinking Frisco or where are you thinking? I'm looking like Keller, Flower Mound, Grapevine. So basically you go Fort Worth and then straight up I towards the I know where Grapevine water. is. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, right over there. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast right now, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give us a five-star review. And we've got content all over the place, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. But we also have a coaching program. If you are looking for a coach, we have the Millionaire Mentorship. And this is a coaching program where I actually help you get your first investment property within the first 90 days or I'll pay you $1,000 cash. That's how confident I am to get you that type of result. I know you might be here and you might be listening. You might be scared. You might not want to take action, but that is not going to get you where you want to be. And obviously, if you're listening to this podcast right now, you want to take action and you're trying to gather the information, but maybe you're confused. Maybe you're just like a lot of people that I've talked to. You're scared of losing money, you want to become financially free, but you don't know where to start. And that's exactly what I help you to do in this program. So do yourself a favor, book a call with me and my team, and let's get the ball rolling. The link is in the description, and we'll put it in the video right here, right now. Thanks. Hope you enjoy the show. So what attracted you to Texas? Uh, Well, I have a little bit of family down there, but the main thing is, uh, well, it's your podcast. I won't say anything political other than... No, uh, go for it. Okay, so Texas isn't Seattle. Uh, My wife was a teacher in the greater Seattle area for a long time. Yeah. Um, That is not my political leaning at all. Yeah. The exact opposite of Seattle is is my favorite. We're on the same page. Yeah, so... Why do you think I left? Yeah, (laughs) so Texas has like actual like freedom and common sense. Yeah. Um, Then the other big thing is Texas is warm, Yeah. which for most of the year. Yeah. Whereas Seattle, you get your traditional like two and a half months of... Some Crap. sunlight, yeah, and then the rest of the year is just gray, Crap. rainy, cold, awful. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go into that a little bit. Like when I was leaving Seattle, I remember, like, you get used to growing up in Seattle since you grew up the same way. You you never have an umbrella because you just are used to rain all the time, and you walk through the rain. I don't know anybody who's from Seattle that actually has an umbrella. No, that's that's how you identify the tourist. Yeah, yeah, and, and then you go in there and you're like, you know, uh, you know, this this place. It's great. I grew up here, especially if you grew up in Issaquah. It was so beautiful just mm-hmm. to, as a kid, and, and, and but it's changed, right? Like the political environment there, do you know, I don't even know if you knew this, but my you know my mentor, one of the first guys who taught me real estate, if you park a, a car in your vacant house in Seattle, you get a $500 fine. Like they have gone bat <laughs> shit crazy with all of the, I don't care because... Uh, the liberal nonsense there that it it's people i mean i don't know why anybody stays i'm having trouble figuring it out when's the last time you've been downtown seattle have you just recently recently. okay it's all the parking garages are completely worn down the buildings are worn down no one's investing new money down there so just everything looks gross it's flooded with homeless and it gets worse every single year but they're building a ton of condos that they are. That's the craziest part. And people are still moving there. You look at the population growth and it's like, it's slowed down from what it used to be, but people still want to live there. I don't get it. Well, you know, it's because with the Microsoft shift, if you will, Microsoft started down there and they built all of these, all of these offshoots from Microsoft, like the Hotwire, the Travelocity, the Expedia, the Zillow. And then you have all this, so you have a ton of workforce talent down there for dot coms. It's become the Silicon Valley, yep. right? And that's why people are living there. But really, it sucks. They have not done anything for their infrastructure. They, they, it's the same freeways that you've been driving on for years and years and years. <laughs> and I, I know that Tacoma is where I always gravitated towards, but we mm-hmm. were, just, we're actually just selling a property in Tacoma that we bought six years ago for like, 60 grand and we have it in contract for like 400,000. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, the amount of stuff, but so you're moving to Texas and what are your plans in Texas and why do you want to move there? 
Uh, the biggest thing for me is I've lived in Washington for 31 years. Like I, I made it all the way down to Renton from Isqua, so I've moved like 15 minutes. Yeah. I want the warmth. I want the the people. Because people in Seattle are just not friendly. That's in general, that's, we're known for just being like not talkative, no eye contact. Right. So I just want to be around like nice people, warm weather, and that's like if I start a family, I'm not sold on that's what I do. But if we have kids, I want to raise them in Texas as opposed to Washington. So just prepping my family, like I want to live somewhere I want to be around people I want to be with, and live the life I want to live. And it's harder to do in Washington. Now we have an awesome resort there. So when you want to come for those three beautiful months where it's just sun and water and mountains, pop up to the resort in Washington. But we're getting to the point where we had four business cycles. Yeah. You have your build phase, and we talked about this a little bit in your presentation, but right. Cody and I built the machine that's going to get us to financial freedom. Right. And I was able to retire my wife from the awful school district. So it's like, okay, we got that done. Now she works with us, and while she works twice as many hours, she has 10 times as much fun. She's <laughs> phenomenal. And now we're stabilizing. We're finishing the last few projects to get everything. It's like renovated, fully leased. We've, our buildings are getting pretty optimal. Once we're done with that, I have the stability to be like, okay, I don't need to be standing at the property all the time, right. managing everything. Right. We can add a few more people, and that gets me to Texas. So the timing is widely based on our four cycles of you build, you stabilize, optimize. I can be a little bit more remote. And then our last phase, we're going to pay off all of the debt, but I'm not there yet because we're not optimized. Yeah, so that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad that you're moving out of there. I tell everybody to get the hell out of there. In fact, me and my, <laughs> in fact, me and my business partner who lived in Tacoma, um, you know, we're building our houses next to each other in Naples, Florida. And <laughs> that's so fun. Yeah, no, like it's kind of a similar story to you and Cody's. Him and I have been working together for um, since 2008 and not in the same capacity as you guys are like locked step you know we 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 do we 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 did some real estate stuff and whatnot but taking that that much forward we were like i was like yo get out of seattle it's like when COVID happened he was like i'm definitely gone you know and then i was like that was the catalyst for me yeah and so um we're building our house next to each other in florida and i think that one thing that i would tell you since because i left seattle at 28 and you're 31, so that's not that far off. Yep, we're about and the same. I, and I thought, like, if I never leave, if I don't leave right now, mm-hmm. I'm never going to leave. And you, when you leave someplace, you actually change because you're in a different environment. Yep. Right? And the grass sometimes is greener in the other place, <laughs> right? Especially when it's sunny in Texas. Yep. So tell me, like, what is what got you into real estate? Real estate, for me, and... You say it all the time. I I watch all your content. The main thing for me is real estate is the surest way to hit my targets with the rules around how you can play the game, how you scale the game. The the fact that we're a multifamily. Right. People will always need shelter. Throughout all of humankind, it's it's a need. And where do we invest? I choose areas where the population growth goes up. Right. People ask all the time, like, how do I choose my market? It's like, well, you're providing housing for humans. Right. (laughs) Do humans want to live there? Yeah. Probably a good investment. Yeah. Buy buy housing. Siberia's out. Yeah, Siberia's (laughs) out. There there are places in the Midwest that you can cash flow like crazy. But then you look at the population going down. I'm like, I'm not going to play that game. I right. invest. I own some in St. Joe, Missouri. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. How do you like that? Uh, not well. <laughs> yeah. It just, you know, you, you deal with something interesting there is like, I have several in Kansas City and everybody told me to stay away from St. Joe. Now, now I think it is a good market if you live there, mm. but as somebody who doesn't live there, the city's mentality, and I actually, they actually just bulldoze my house. Okay? Oh, joy. Yeah, the city's mentality is we've got 20,000 too many houses versus we have a problem and we need to get jobs to this economy. Yep. And that's like Cody and I are in uh, most of our portfolios, Moses Lake and then Grant County, Washington. So very middle of the state. That's where almost all of it is. They've just tripled their power grid. They're having a huge housing shortage. There's battery manufacturers who are coming in for the uh, electric car batteries adding another several thousand jobs. Uh, Microsoft, Boeing, Amazon does all their warehouses and their um, data centers. But uh, cheapest power in the US is Grant County, Washington. So you have all these stable jobs, people want to live there, it's fantastic. So is that by, how far away is that from Quincy? Uh, so Quincy, oh, that's funny, that's where Cody started. So it's about a 40 minute drive from Quincy, Washington. Moses Lake. We're buying a 12 plex right now in Afreda, which is 30 I was, minutes I just, north. I got a ticket in Afreda. That's what I was going to go next. I was like, oh, I no a way. Sp- speeding ticket in Afreda. <laughs> or somebody did. I was with, I think I, I think it was me. But uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, so are you going to continue to buy properties in Washington? 
I will, because we're established there. I have my team. Mm -hmm. We started our um, property management company, Multifamily Property Management LLC. All of our names are super creative. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, that, yeah, that, that, that right one, after we named it, we uh, bought a resort. So now they're all, all my employees there are employed by multifamily property management. It almost makes sense. Yeah. But the, uh, uh, with the team that I have there, we're really well optimized. And the fact that Washington is difficult to operate in is an advantage to us. Because now that we're already in, you get more appreciation in markets like that where people want to move, but not a lot of people want to play in because it's not like the Midwest. Right. The barrier to entry is a little higher. We're established. We'll buy there forever. Right. The other big thing with our strategy is we focus on relationships. There's a lot of people who are just hammered. I want a distressed property. I'm looking right. for foreclosures. I'm right. looking for whatever. Yeah. We just built relationships. I never asked anyone to sell me a property ever. All we do is I meet with the people who've done what I want to do. Right. Which is why I'm down here talking to you. You're a lot farther along than I am. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, but it, maybe it, not so far, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you I don't know. I've looked at some of your portfolio. You're a little bigger. You have a tower. I don't have a tower yet. Yeah. Yet. Right. Like, I mean, like, here's the way I always see it is like, you never underestimate the guy that's right behind you because he could clip you in a second. That's why you keep the drive, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure your drive is, but you're further ahead of me than I was at 31. Well, we have the advantage with all the media stuff, because I'm not that much younger than you, but I'm a little bit younger. And there's been a whole lot of tech in the information space right. between you and me. Yeah. I can take the time of guys like you and we can condense it down because you're that much easier to reach online. Right. You're accessible. Right. There's events like this where I can just show up and I'm like, ask you my questions. Whatever you did in 10 years, I can do in two, not because I'm awesome, because there's guys like you who share all that to the guys like me. Yeah, you know, and I think that's cool, like, because we're we're constantly, that's the one thing I do like about social media. You know, for me as a business, it's something that like, I'm like, okay, I definitely need to hire this out like ASAP. Um, but, you know, the one cool thing is you do see somebody like the David Goggins for like my health and fitness journeys where I'm like, okay, how do I, how do I, uh, you know, get to that next level of fitness? Because, you know, that's something that I'm always struggling with. Or there's somebody else that inspires you, like. But a lot of the guys that I'm really looked up to are like the Carl Icons, the mm -hmm. Stephen Roths, the uh, the guys who are you know own the biggest of the biggest of the biggest. I mean, that's what I truly want to do. I want to be one of, a corporate raider, you know, yeah. at some point in time. They're like, that's what tickles my fancy. And um, I I found that from talking to people is you like you said you got to be around smart people you got to be able to talk to smarter people than you and if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room it's time to change rooms right? yeah so you've built your whole portfolio you've been playing the game a lot longer you've done multiple markets you've heard a little bit of where cody and i are at i have i'm in central washington we have a little seven plex in seattle we got a resort which is a really cool you know that's the one flex right it's like oh there's a really unique asset we got to take out seller finance love it I'm looking at moving to Texas. Right. You're me. So wind back time a little bit. Yeah. And you're basically already me just further along. You, yeah. Issaquah. Yeah. You left yeah. the city. Yeah. What's my next move? If you're me, what would you do next? Hmm. Okay. So I wouldn't answer that question without a few more questions. Let's go. Okay. So what is your goals? My goal specifically besides just getting to Texas, which we've pretty well mapped out. Right. I want to show how many. I want to show as many people as possible what is possible. Like what we did, we got to do so quickly. Yeah. And it was very, very intentional, planned out. Like we just went hard for right. a year and a half. I want to keep playing the game, just to see how far we can go. Like I, I've hit all my financial goals for the most part. Now you grow to grow, and I, I really want to just go. Okay, if we take this to the next level, I want to pay it all off, and then that's a stair step to go. Okay, I own. Right now, I think we have 21 million in, in real estate. When you pay all that off, that's a stair step where I'm like, well, now how do we push this to 50, 75, and then pay it down and then use that as your launch pad to move forward. That's the game plan right now. But I, I'm playing the game because I love teaching and playing the game. I think that if I was you, I would try to do as many deals and as many different deals as possible because... I think that I love your guys' strategy, but what I love more than anything for me personally mm -hmm. is, and I think this is, goes into your strategy, is solving the problem. Yeah. And 
what I mean by that is there's there's a lot of things that you're going to figure out as you guys have kind of mentioned before with like the putting the ovens in and doing this. And I saw Cody, I think on a on a backhoe at one point in time where <laughs> yeah, like that's where, where, where you where you go and you say, you know, there's just so many little th- financing avenues and and Cody and I talked about this the other day was like tax increment financing. Like if you're going into Texas as a different state than Washington, do they offer historical tax credits? You know, do they offer, and, and, and even with Kansas City, like on that skyscraper that I bought, I may be able to get a deal with the city where they rent the part or whole or the whole piece of the property. And then some of these cities will do other things for you. So my thing would be is if you are moving to that city and we just talked politically, I would get yourself politically aligned with the council people, okay? That would be the first thing I did. I have the governor's cell phone in Nevada. I have the people, and the reason I know that is we talked about who, not how, and we talked about these sort of things. I found that out by owning a towing company in Nevada, and I had so many bullets pointed at me, I didn't know who pulled the trigger. And what I found out is I needed a call, and I didn't have that call. And you can play the game, and you can play the game safe, and you can play the game anything, but you're going to get so big sometime where somebody's going to want to take you down. Right. And so I think when you ever you go to that Marcus and market in Texas that you need to connect with the right people and the right people are the people who are on the city council. And those people on the city council are going to be able to tell you and help you with what you need. And then if and let me just be quite honest. You're either hiring lawyers or you're dealing with politicians. Lawyers are very expensive. Politicians are not in terms of getting in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're in, and this is from Stephen Roth, he says, if you're in business with the city, you're in good business. And they have a lot of incentives, especially in a lot of these markets where they need people to grow, right? Like the Midwest, they're going to open up their checkbook to you a lot of times. There's so many deals. Like, I'll give you an example. I was talking to my banker yeah, and my banker tells me, he says, Hey, you know what? You see that deal over there? I go, yeah. What about it? He goes, I financed that deal. And I said, he goes, you want to know the cool thing about it? I said, what's that? He goes, they gave shields, which is a big, uh, like the, the biggest, biggest, like bass pro shop type of thing. Yeah. But it's all sports, like every single sports you'd want. And he goes, he gave them the rent for free the landlord did. I go, well, where did he make his money? He goes, well, he cut a deal with the state where he gets a 1% spread on the sales tax. So for me, the, what I'm saying is there's so many ways to make money in real estate. If you understand by talking to the right bankers, the right politicians, and the right people, that you're going to be like, seller financing is one thing, but there's all this other crazy stuff. So when I take those little tidbits, I know I can use that later. Yeah. Right? Like I know like... Oh, that that one percent spread because why did that guy do that? He doesn't care what he's charging Shields. Maybe he charges Shields thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. But if Shields sells five million dollars a month and he's getting that rip, and then it attracts all those other tenants for those anchor tenants, and mm-hmm. he's making money that way, you know, I, you know, I think that the other thing, like um, for what you guys are doing, the one thing I can tell you is I really believe in tenant mix. And so I think as you guys continue to go, because I know you're going to continue to grow and you're going, okay, we got this apartment building over here. What can we add to this tenant mix? Like a car wash. We know there's sort of like popping up all over the place. Those are good, right? Yep. They attract people. So I think now it's so hard to get people into places, mm-hmm. right? Because nobody wants to leave their house. Everything's like home delivery, but they have to go and wash their car or they have to go get a cup of coffee or they have to do this unless they start delivering cups of coffee and car washes. But I think that, you know, getting into that development standpoint with what your properties that you currently own and getting politically aligned would be the thing that I would tell you that I would do. See, that is helpful because we've done no no politicking yet to any. Uh, I mean, we've done it with the owner thing. I mean, that's that's how we build it's the, the relationship. It's the but, same thing. But we have to go a practical application. I'll go out and do the politic thing. That's we actually called our company multifamily strategy because the whole strategy is learn other people's strategies and then implement them. It's not just the hey, we're the creative finance guys. That's just what we had to do to get in. And we are at that phase where I'm like, okay, I got to learn from everyone who's done something else because what got you to where you're at is not what's going to get you to the next level. So yeah, that's well, fantastic. Yeah, a lot of the cities will give you money to build stuff. That and would then be they very will, helpful. They're called grants. And then they will forgive that debt. So like that's... That is also very helpful. Yeah, like <laughs> so... And in Texas, they have um, lots of rural land. Texas mm-hmm. is the biggest the state with the most private landowners of any other state 
in the union, period. That's why when they talk about political, and they talk about Texas, they have the most power. And they're always talking about Texas being a swing state because t- people in Texas own more land than anybody else. See, that's awesome. And there's a lot of land to own. It's mostly flat, and it just rolls on forever. Yeah, man. you got to get yourself a big spread. Yep. That's the goal. That's the goal. One, uh, one deal at a time. That's right. Um, so in the next 10 years, where do you see yourself? Next 10 years, I see myself in Texas. I see our portfolio as it exists paid off. I never set unit count goals. I mean, I did for my first one. I wanted to get to 30 units by 30. Cody helped me blow that way out of the water. He's like, we'll just buy a 38 plex. And that's where I got the principles of like, oh, well, if you want to uh, get 100 units, the easiest way to do it is to buy 100 unit property. Right. Um, so the easiest way to go bigger is to buy bigger. Right. But um, I don't have a unit count goal. All I know is I want to be a heck of a lot farther than we are now. I want to span multiple states. And I would love to have a large enough team where everyone on the team gets a day off because we're not there yet. It'd yeah. be nice to be there next year, but right. in 10 years, I, I'm just looking at the, the immediate things. And I'm like, yeah, we, we grind all the time because we're, I mean, we're infant stage of the whole game. We got in and thank you, Bigger Pockets, for giving us some media attention. I mean, Cody got their most watched video of all time. And that, yeah, I heard that about helped. that. Yeah. So we got some little boosts, but I mean, we're still in the infant stage of business. And so we're looking at, okay, how do we add the right people on the bus so we have a cohesive team and we have the systems in place? to actually own our time. We have financial freedom, but I'd, we're multiple steps away from, I own my time and I can go where I want with who I want, when I want, and I'm yeah. not there yet. 10 years, I wanna be there. Christian, what would be like the like the the dream of all dreams? Like if you could just paint, paint the biggest dream that you could happen, like what would it be? I, so, so some people love the like, oh, I want the, I want the cars or I want the freedom of travel. I actually just love being at home and having an epic house. Like, I, I'm the dream house guy. So what's the house look like? Oh, my wife and I were just talking about this. So we, for the longest time, we were like, what if we could just get to like a $2 million house in Texas? And then I talked to a friend who's like, oh, dude, I just I built this $10 million house. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe we need to think bigger. What would it have if we could ever get there? Right. My wife's like, okay, well, the first thing is I want to watch Netflix on a in like an actual movie theater. Like right. I want a theater in my house. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Right now, for me, my gym's in my garage, and my garage also has my laundry room. Okay. I want a laundry room inside the house and a gym inside the house. Like, those two things would be such huge life upgrades. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But I'm a really simple guy. Like, for me, I'm like the the sexiest thing on earth. I'm like, I can do my laundry inside. (laughs) I'm not in the garage. And so my wife's like, oh, we need a bowling alley, and we can have like 40 acres. We can have animals. I'm like, sure, as long as I'm not taking care of the animals, I'm down. Yeah. But for me, it's like a big house, something where like you come to it, and you're like, holy crap, how did you get there? I just want to that, – that's the one epic thing that I want to own, just a, my house is going to be a castle. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what. I um, bought my first new car at 40, mm-hmm. and I built my – not my first house, but I built my house I live in right now and it was really cool and we did everything that we wanted and we waited and we ground it out just like you know i could have afforded to buy something a long time ago and so it's really a satisfying feeling to get what you want and to have what you want and you know just to build kind of a legacy that and you know to do exactly what you want so i hope you get it and i'm that's super exciting and i think in texas it's, it's way more affordable than it is in washington it would be hard not to be yeah it's- yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, especially in Issaquah. Yeah, Issaquah is expensive. Uh, man, I mean, Seattle just keeps growing. You can't build anywhere because everything's mountains and floodplains. So, I mean, you're pretty limited on where you can actually put good development, which makes the value just super expensive. And for somebody listening, first of all, give Christian a five-star review. That would help us out. Share this video with a friend. And what would you say to somebody who hasn't bought any real estate yet, or maybe they're just brand new, what advice would you give them, Christian? I'm going to go back to my first point. Uh, someone needed to tell me a decade before I started my journey, like before college, the right. only way to be a real estate investor is to buy real estate. Is that like super dumb and simple? Yes. But if you keep that in the front of your mind, it's like, okay, I can't get in the game until I'm in the game. Right. So it doesn't matter. Like Cody started on a 12 plex. I started on a duplex, then another duplex. Then we did the 38 plex together. The size of the asset doesn't matter get in the game people who start buying real estate typically within about five years reach financial freedom or sooner right that's all you have to do but the biggest hurdle for everyone 
is, oh, I get stuck in analysis paralysis. I don't right. know where to start. I'm stuck. You can beat all of that if you just keep it in the front of your mind. Okay, I'm not an investor until right. I invest. Let's buy. It could be a duplex. It could be a condo. Just buy a piece of real estate that cash flows. Right. And you're pretty much good to go. Right. Yeah, I think that's great. I, gr- I think that's great wisdom. Now, for people who want to follow your journey, what would be the best way to do that? Are you on Instagram? Are you on TikTok? Or yeah, so I'm on Instagram, and I'm really responsive there. That just seems to be the messaging platform I can keep up with. Yeah, me too. Oh, perfect. So yep. I'm at Christian Osgood. I'm lucky enough to have my own name. So okay, cool. Yeah, and OS Good is my last name. So Christian Osgood. And then both Cody and I share everything we learn on our YouTube channel, which is Cody and Christian Multifamily Strategy. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you coming to the event. I appreciate you guys just pouring your heart into it. You guys kicked ass, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one, man. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Christian. Appreciate it. Peace. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Make sure you give us a five-star review. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this podcast with a friend, and make sure that you schedule a call with me and my team. We have the Millionaire Mentorship Program. This is for newbie and advanced investors to get started investing in real estate. And if you're listening to this podcast right now, that's exactly what you want, right? You want to learn how to invest in real estate. It's changed my life. It can change your life. And we have a program that'll help you get your first or next investment property within the next 90 days, or I'll pay you $1,000 cash and you don't pay. Guess what else we're launching? We're launching a fund. And if you're interested, I'll include a link in my bio to this fund where you can actually invest with me on a lot of the properties that we're in. In fact, I'm in one of my properties right now in downtown Kansas City in a building that I bought using my own money, but I started with just one property and you can do the exact same thing that I did, but you gotta get started, you gotta take action. So whether you wanna invest with me in my fund or whether you wanna schedule a call with my team, both those links are in the bio. Enjoy the show, give us a five-star review.